Early in March, it was the 6th anniversary of this channel. Today, April 15th, it's my birthday! So to make up for the fact that I didn't do much for the 6th anniversary and to celebrate my 26th year on this earth, let me do a video about the 6 video games that define my childhood. Get those last 3 digits together and we have a 666 video in our hands. <laughs> Simple enough, right? Then let's get started! Oh, hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of The Game Shelf. I am your host, Louis. You know, when I started this channel back in 2018, I wanted to make my first video something very special. Talk about a game that means so much to me. And what better one than the one that got me into gaming? Super Mario World. I brought this game up a few times, calling it one of my favorite platformers of all time alongside Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, Celeste and Pizza Tower. But when I compare it to those games, it is definitely the least good of them. But the sentimental value it has and what it means to me is something that can't be replaced. I've gone on a record to call Super Mario World the first video game I ever played. For all I know it could have also been Pac-Man 2, but that's besides the point. While I know many other millions of people can say the same, Mario was the character to show me the joys of gaming, and Super Mario World was the perfect game in my child's eyes. I love how it looked, the colors were all so appealing, the character designs were so adorable to me, and the music was just so wacky, bouncy and iconic. And of course, the gameplay itself was more than excellent. Simple enough to comprehend, but challenging enough to keep me engaged. And on top of that, as a child it was incredible to just figure things out. From moving to one world to the next, finding new secrets, discovering different color Yoshis, and even learning how to use the wing cape. Every single aspect of this game was pure bliss to me and it pushed me to want to try other titles. While well, I can say it's the greatest video game ever created, for me it's the quintessential video game, because it was the one to get me into the medium I still love so much to this day. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I'll let you... Nah, you know what? It was definitely a very good thing. Which is funny because, even though this game defined my childhood, it wasn't the first game I ever beat. So here's a fun story. Back in Mexico, I used to live in a different house in my early childhood. But when we moved to another house, we lost the SNES. My parents said that it was most likely stolen by the mover guys, but as far as I know, they might as well sold it too. Sometime later, my brother got a pirated Xbox, which could emulate so many games from different consoles. NES, SNES, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, and many more. You ever heard the term Play Dos Chipeada? It's the exact same thing just on the Xbox. However, he wouldn't let me touch the console myself, so whenever he wasn't in the house, I would use it without his permission, play Super Mario World until eventually, I beat the game on my own. Whenever I hear the term video game, this is the one that comes to mind first. Surprise surprise, I grew up with Pokemon, and this one is a bit off. Early in my life I had access to three regions at the same time, Kanto, Johto and Hoenn. With a GBA I will juggle between these games all the time, but here's the thing, as a kid I was never able to beat them. Kanto because I didn't know any English, so how the hell was I supposed to know you had to give lemonade to a security guard just to proceed? Hoenn because I could never beat the Elite Four, and Johto because the battery of my cartridge was dead, so it will never save my data. Regardless of that, Pokemon became a staple in my earlier years, from watching the anime, asking my parents to get me toys and even playing the spin-offs. This franchise was a wellspring of happiness to me. If I am very critical to its current state nowadays, it's because I really care, you know? I want to see it do better. Not in numbers, because we know it's gonna sell very well regardless, but in quality. And still, going back to the topic at hand, even though I had so much exposure to Pokemon as soon as I have memory, if there's one particular generation I can say stands above them all, it's the second one. I already talked about this in a previous video, but let me tell you a bit about it once again. Johto is a region that has so many issues. Awkward pacing, 
on Balance Challenge, and many Johto Pokémon only being available in Kanto, with many of these issues even being carried over to the fantastic remakes. Yet, Pokémon Gold and Silver are irreplaceable to me, because as a kid, Halicool C was a magical game. It's hard to explain, but out of all the Pokémon regions, Johto has an atmosphere that remains unmatched to this day. From the aesthetics, the architecture, the designs of the monsters, and especially the music, every aspect of this generation is pure bliss to me. And more than that, as a kid, Pokémon Silver made me understand what a sequel was supposed to be. Something that fixes the issues of the predecessor, but also expands on all it does right. And while Johto is far from perfect, you just can't ignore all the things and ideas it brought to the table. Oh yeah, and one more thing. When I first learned about emulation, the very first game I ever emulated was Pokémon Silver on my sister's laptop. And for the first time in my life, I beat a Pokémon game. And after doing that incredible post-game content, I only ended up loving this generation even more. So yeah, that adds some extra value to it, too. While my relationship with this franchise is very complicated nowadays, I always look fondly to my happiest days with it. But whenever the second generation is brought up, it always takes me back to my early childhood. It's so special to me. Here's something you might find interesting. As a kid, unless they were called Pokémon, I actually used to dislike turn-based RPGs. Oh! I know, crazy, right? But yeah, if you ever brought up something like Final Fantasy to my face, I would have been like, bleh. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because the official art wasn't as cartoony and colorful like Pokémon? I guess. However, there was one particular game that became pivotal in changing my opinion on the genre. Absolutely yes! Paper Mario is one of those games that for me is perfect in every aspect. As a kid, I didn't care at all that it was a turn-based adventure. The combat was extremely easy to understand, but not brain dead enough to be boring. And you know, at this point I already knew Mario for all the bling bling wahoo platforming adventures and all those card, party and sports spin-offs. Paper Mario, however, was the one that truly blew me away at how different it was. I mean, it's still a Mario I know and love, but there was something more in here that I couldn't find anywhere else. From the gameplay, the story, and all those colorful characters you met in your adventure. I should also note that, at the time, this game took me years to beat. But that's because I didn't know any English back then. So that's when I learned about the existence of the internet and all those fancy guides you could find in there. It was mind-blowing to me at first because I spent so long stuck in the second chapter, so being able to actually make progress and seeing the world expand right in front of my eyes, it just... it made me so happy! From getting to the Boo Mansion, going to an island full of Yoshis, and even to a garden in the sky, I just couldn't believe how much better this game kept getting until eventually I reached the end of it. Honestly, throughout the years I have struggled to decide which one I like more, Paper Mario 64 or The Thousand Year Door. Sure, the latter has better combat, better characters, and a crazier and cooler story. But 64 has a better soundtrack, cuter art direction, a very unique charm, and of course, that childhood bias is near unbeatable to me. It may not be the most complex RPG out there, and it may be a bit too simple at times. But it is the one that made me see the wonders of the genre, and no matter how many times I replay it, I never tire of it. Zelda is one of those franchises that was love at first sight to me. Which is ironic because I don't know how I came to know these games, I just know I've always been attracted to them. My story with these titles is a curious one. 
Despite having Nintendo consoles as a kid, I never actually had access to Zelda games. I would usually watch cousins or friends play it and I was so blown away. It didn't matter if it was the 2D games like A Link to the Past or something like Ocarina of Time. I just knew that eventually when I played a Zelda game, it would be the best time of my life. And eventually I got one. The very first Zelda game that I played was Zelda 2 on the GBA. Yeah, that sure was a way to start with the Zelda series. I mean, I still liked it, make no mistake. Zelda 2 is good, but... Did you think I was gonna be able to beat it myself? Yeah, I never got past Death Mountain. As I grew older, I got access to the GameCube collection, and I was especially fascinated by Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. However, the latter's time limit was just too complex for me back then, and now it's one of my favorite games. Funny how that works out. And no Ocarina of Time, I definitely had an easier time with it, but I will often come across terrifying moments that will make me stop. The Kakariko Graveyard, the Castle Town being filled with re deaths, or the Forest Temple, it was just too much for me at the time. Eventually, I had to give the collection back to my friend, but sometime later, I got a title that will go on to become my defining Zelda game. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker It's so funny how back then this game was criticized for being cartoony instead of dark and gritty. For me, that didn't matter at all. This game means so much to me. Not just for the fact that it let me enjoy the thrill of adventure that Zelda games are known for, but because it was the first Zelda game I ever beat. And that actually mattered a lot to me, because Wind Waker also had moments I was totally terrified of. The first visit to the Forsaken Fortress, the Earth Temple, the Ghost Ship. This was a game that took me months to beat, but eventually I did it. I overcame my fears until I reached the end, but do you know what made me feel even more accomplished? When I beat the Wind Waker, I barely knew any English at the time. And unlike Paper Mario, I didn't use a guide at all. At most, I would only ask a friend for advice, but that was pretty much it. I beat this game through sheer willpower, by following my intuition, using the visual guides the game gives you, and picking up keywords as I came across them. Wind Waker became the first Zelda game I ever beat. And more than that, I adore the hell out of this experience. Even with my extremely limited English, this game managed to thrill me and even scare me. It made me laugh, rage and even cry at times. It may not be the greatest Zelda game out there, but damn, if it is in the most special one to me. Okay, here's one of the most basic entries I could have picked. up with Nintendo games, you naturally come to know certain franchises by default. Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda, Pokemon, you get the idea. Smash Bros on the Nintendo 64 was insane to me because, yeah, those characters I like were there, but there's also a plethora of others I've never heard nor seen before. Captain Falcon, wow, this guy looks so cool. Ness, what the heck is an Earthbound? Samus, the awesome robot guy. Would you believe me if I tell you that I first came to know Kirby through Smash Bros? For my child brain, it was so unbelievable to know Nintendo had more properties besides the obvious ones. And honestly, that's all I can say. Sure, Smash 64 is really damn fun. I love playing it, especially with elementary school friends. But Smash Bros is defining to me in the sense that it opened the gateways for me to eventually want to try new franchises. And not just 64, both Melee and Brawl play their roles too. That's how I got into games and franchises like Fire Emblem, Pikmin, Mother 3, Metal Gear, and many others. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's fair for 64 to take all the credit. The first three games released before I turned 10, and I think they all deserve equal credit in making me play franchises that will change my life forever. And not just that, I feel that Brawl specifically was the game responsible for making me appreciate music as a whole. 
with so many remixes and different genres for different games, I genuinely believe that out of all the Smash Bros. games, Brawl had the best new music of them all. While I've had some personal downs with this franchise and it's very far away from being my favorite, I just can't deny the good things it achieved, mainly getting me into new and amazing experiences. At the risk of sounding like a YouTuber from the early 2010s, here's something important that I want to share. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. You know, when Sonic went 3D, things got rough. Banjo-Kazooie is the childhood defining game for me, and I'm serious. All the other games I talk about mean a lot to me, but if you were to ask me to just pick one, Banjo-Kazooie would be my first answer. For me, this is a game I can't say it's perfect. I genuinely see zero flaws in it. I adore the gameplay. Even with the Nintendo 64's horrible controller, it still feels very good to play. The level design. Each and every single area was so distinct from one another, and all of them excelled for different reasons. Yes, even levels like Clankern's Cavern or Rusty Pocket Bay. The music composed by the amazing Grant Kirkhope that gives each area a very unique identity. And just, just how goofy and whimsical everything is. Even if back then I didn't even know how to read, the visual humor was so charming to me that it made this game stand out above the rest. Even though it released in 1998, I don't think it has aged one bit. I can easily recommend it to any person who likes 3D platformers. I can pick it up and 100% it anytime and have so much fun without fail. I actually prefer this over Mario 64. Great game and it's definitely better for speedrunning. But Banjo-Kazooie is simply the better experience for me. I even adore the sequel Banjo-Tooie. Yeah, sure, it's way more complex, has more notable flaws and it has a darker tone, but I still think it's a fantastic game, just for different reasons. Banjo and Kazooie are icons for me. The mere sight of them is enough to drive me into a frenzy like. Remember when they were announced in Smash Ultimate? <laughs> That was not acting to gather clicks. That was genuine excitement over seeing a dream of mine become a reality. Actually, there's one more thing I can share. As some of you know, I recently moved from Mexico all the way to Canada. Naturally, I had to leave a ton of things back in my country. But one of the few things I decided to bring with me were my Banjo-Kazooie Amiibo and my Banjo-Kazooie T-shirt. There was no reason at all for me to do this, but I did it because I think I just wanted to bring a part of my childhood with me. That just goes to show how iconic these characters are for me. You know what's strange though? Even if Banjo Kazooie never get a new game ever again, I will be fine with that because why force Microsoft to do it? Would you really trust your favorite characters to someone who clearly doesn't want to do anything with them? No, I mean, if they make a new game and it's actually amazing, sure, bring it on, I'll be the first one in line. But that's very very unlikely to happen, and besides, I am more than glad with what we got already. Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie are excellent games in my eyes, and I couldn't ask for anything more. They gave me some of the happiest days in my childhood, and whenever I look back at them nowadays, it's with a smile. And that's that. Actually, I could keep doing this all day. There's many more games out there that define my childhood. Like Sonic Adventure 2 or SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. That's actually a really good one. But I don't know. I guess these six that I just talked about were simply the most important ones to me. They define my childhood just that tiny bit more than the rest of them. But anyway, now I wanna know. Which video games define your childhood? They don't have to be the craziest out there or the most niche that you have seen. As long as they matter, something important to you, that's what I really want to see in the comments. And yeah, what else can I say? Six years, thank you so much guys, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. You know that I really love what I do and when you guys enjoy that, that makes me much, much more happy. So yeah, uh, I already talked about like about the sixth anniversary on a previous video, but I feel that it, it doesn't hurt to to remind you that this really matters at all to me, and I really care about you guys too. So 
yeah, I guess I just wanted to say that. Have a wonderful day and take care, because I'll see you next time.